Okay, this is a match pair design. It's year 2005, form B, question number three. And this is actually one of my favorite studies to talk about. It's, I find it kind of funny. So we're gonna talk about a match pair design by looking at the recipe. First off, in a match pair design, each individual receives both treatments, all right? And a match pair design is a type of blocking where we're controlling for differences in the, between the individual. And I will explain that in a moment, but consider this. Some people sunburn more easily. So we want, might wanna try the sunburn medication on the sunscreen on uh, one, the new one on one arm and the uh, old one on the other arm so that we equalize the differences because the differences between individual. Because remember, we can't control for all the differences between individuals unless we can do test them twice. To be truthful with you, we would love to do match pair designs all the time um, because then we're controlling for variations between the individuals. Unfortunately, that's not always possible. Consider the cancer medication. If it works and you get well, I am not going to give you cancer medication again. I can't go back and give you cancer again. On the other hand, if it, unfortunately it didn't work and it progresses, we can't um, go back and fix that either because you're no longer in the same situation, all right? So in a matched pair design, we randomly assign you to uh, two treatment groups. Treatment group, the, this group would get treatment one first and this will get treatment two first. This one just gets a reverse order. So all we did is just swap the order of the treatments. And at the end, we compare results. And you're like, well, why does you swap the order? Well, once again, by swapping the order, we are assured that it's not the order that matters. Because sometimes order does matter, but when we swap the order, we know it doesn't, okay? So we always have to talk about random assignment. We talk about the uh, which treatment group, treat, what treatments you're getting in which order, and then we talk about the results. So here we go. We're going to go through an entire process um, and end up conducting a match pair. So in a search of mosquito repellent that is safer than the ones that are currently on the market, scientists have developed a new compound that is rated as less toxic than the current compound, thus making a repellent that contains this new compound safer for human use. So basically, we have a current compound and a new compound. Um, scientists also believe that a repellent containing the new compound will be more effective than the ones that contain the current compound. So they believe the new one is going to be more effective. To test the effectiveness of the new compound versus that of the current compound, scientists have randomly selected 100 people from a state. Okay, so we've controlled for the location by selecting 100 people from a state. We have up to 100 bins with an equal number of mosquitoes in each bin are available for use in the study. After a compound is applied, in other words, a mosquito repellent is applied to a particular forearm, the participant will insert his or her forearm into a bin for one minute, and the number of mosquito bites on the arm at the end of the time will be determined. So I want you to get a picture of this. We have bins full of mosquitoes, and you're gonna get randomly assigned to it, and you're gonna put your arm in a bin, and you're like, who would do anything like that? I'm gonna say, well, it's about to be you guys. Almost all of these, almost all major college towns have places where they run these types of experiments. Why? College students are broke and need money, and so they tend to be the one, a lot of them volunteer for these studies um, to, uh, uh, to help make money. I know my son sold blood um, when he was at Texas Tech. Suppose the study is to be conducted using a completely randomized design, describe a randomization process. And then it also says identify an inference procedure. That's highlighted because at this point, that'll be second semester. We don't know how to do that part. Uh, we'll learn how to do that part second semester. So they said a completely randomized design. So a completely randomized design, is I'm going to put everybody's name in a hat and mix. So there we go. Place all 100 names of, of participants in a hat and mix. The first, the first group of 50 names will be assigned to the current compound. The remaining group will have the new compound applied to the arm. The begins, 
then I need to probably randomize the mosquito bins only because some mosquito bins are going to be mosquito groups may be more hungry than others. All right. Each participant will draw a number from a hat containing the number one to 100. Participants will then place their arm in the bin associated with that number for one minute. The number of bites for each treatment will be compared to determine the compound that worked the best. All right. So basically, in that case, I, said, I talked about the assignment and how you were assigned to the bin. Then I talked about uh, the fact that at the very end of time, we would look at the compare the number of bites to determine which one was more effective. All right. And the parts in yellow, you don't know how to do, so you don't need to write them down unless you choose to. And we're not going to talk about them at this point. We'll talk about them next semester. Then it says part B. Suppose this is to be conducted using a matched pair design. Describe a randomization process. Well, remember in a matched pair design, I said that you get tested twice. So in this case, you're going to get the new medicate, the new um, compound and the old mosquito repellent. And you're like, well, why would you do that? And it's like, well, I think you know people that are very susceptible to mosquito bites and those, and you may know some that don't get bit. Um, my wife gets bit, but she's not very susceptible. I, on the other hand, am extremely delicious and mosquitoes love me, all right? So I'm very susceptible to mosquito bites. So each person will be randomly assigned to a bin as above. Since I've already talked about it, I'm not gonna randomly do it again, all right? The first 50 names drawn from a hat will have the new repellent applied to their right arm and the current repellent applied to their left arm. The remaining 50 subjects will have the new repellent applied to their left arm and the current applied to the right. Now, I don't know that left and right matter, but just in case we do, we randomly assign which arm got it. So that way there's no bias. And those who are assigned to an odd number will place their current repellent, uh, will place their right arm in the bin first, while those assigned to an even number will place their left arm in first. After one minute, with the first arm, the second arm is placed in the bin, then a difference in bites in each arm will be noted. Notice I'm measuring the difference in the individual to see which one is more effective. All right. Part C, which of the designs in part one or in part B or in, in part A or part B is better? So in other words, is a match paired design or is the random assign completely randomized better? Or maybe I should say part A was completely randomized, part B was a match pair, which is better at testing uh, the effectiveness of the new compound? Justify your answer. The match pair design in part B is better than the completely random eyes design because the match pair design helps control for potential sources of variation from person to person, such as an individual's susceptibility to mosquito bites. All right. So basically, a match pair design is great because we can test it twice. All right. We should always carry out a match pair design when possible, but many times it's not possible. And the reason we want to do it is because it controls for differences within the, each individual, and every individual is different. So every individual will react, may react differently. Okay, so that can, uh, concludes this video.